Hello, beloved planet Earth. I am Matt Kahn. And as always, I meet you with love. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life in a brand new chapter of exploration. Welcome to a new horizon of expansion. A moment that if we notice with the subtleties of pure awareness and direct perception will show you how this moment is living proof and evidence that the past has been survived. As today celebrates you taking one step closer to a destiny already fulfilled, simply coming to life. Throughout a journey, like a multi-dimensional movie of your life that you're watching as you live it out. Welcome to the mystery of this moment where everything already is celebrating the only truth to be celebrated which is the truth that you are. And in the celebration of the truth that you are, which arises as I am in each of our subjective experiences, the I am equally alive in all beings expands to become the we are of unity consciousness. I welcome you to this moment of unity. Honored to provide you this moment of relief, reflection, rejuvenation, and reconnection in whatever way meets you exactly where you are and helps you move forward along the highest timeline that you were always meant to explore. I meet you as the I am that you are. With today's transmission being a specific flavor and frequency, healing and transforming something that affects empaths of all walks of life throughout our, all corners of the globe. No matter what country you inhabit or the culture that you embrace. All empaths, whether along the, whether along the spectrum as a conscious empath, or even as beings who are unaware of their empathic abilities, but making their way into that recognition, remembrance, and realization. There is a deep wound that is here to be transformed that for empathic beings cuts to the core quite deeply. And I wanted to take this time together to help us all transform that wound together as one. To deepen your capacity to embody the I am presence, to remember your true nature at a more palpable level and to allow today to express its greatest gift to you of proving how today is unlike any of the yesterdays you've already lived out and survived. Simply as a sneak preview of how exciting tomorrow will be as we prepare for whatever the mystery of tomorrow will be. By making our way through the celebration of today that is always here, always now, as the I am that you are.
that we are as the light of unity consciousness masquerading in a world of individuality. As I see everyone jumping on the broadcast, I welcome you with love. As we dive into the core wound of loneliness, I can share with you that loneliness is a profound feeling that I have felt and carried with me for most of my life. In looking back on my upbringing, most of my experiences of spending time with myself meant being accompanied by loneliness. And along with loneliness comes the despair of not knowing how to see our way through what can feel so insurmountable and overwhelming. And whether you have felt loneliness, are currently lonely, using a variety of distractions to minimize the intensity of how lonely you are, maybe you feel like a ghost in your own life, invisible to others, wishing and wanting to find the right tribe and those of like mind who can value and validate you the way you deserve to be valued and validated. In an attempt to create space in your life to either manifest higher vibrational versions of the people already there or to call in more of your soul tribe so to fill your life with those of like mind and heart and to help you transform loneliness into a gateway of greater connection and self-awareness through this transmission right now let us explore loneliness through the grace, clarity, and beauty of heart-centered consciousness. Loneliness is an evolutionary shift. And in order for there to be an evolutionary shift, a shift is a transition from one perspective of experience to another. So if loneliness is a transition or a shift, it means there's a starting point that moves us to another. And I'll explain what the shift is and then explore it in greater detail. And then, of course, answer some questions along the way. As I begin to help us unpack loneliness, I just want to tell you what an honor it is to be here with you. And how much I love you. And how much you are adored and supported by the universe. And that even though you are never alone, it's okay if you feel alone. Because I have felt alone my entire life. And yet here we are. I'm transmitting a little slower because the energy is so palpable and delicious giving us a chance to sip and savor this vibration and to dr drink in the shift that loneliness helps us to complete. So loneliness is a shift from negotiation with other and into the awareness of there is no other. And as I unpack it, I want to just say that as we move from negotiation with other to there is no other, I want to ease your mind and any fears or concerns that that will mean, meaning what I'm saying is it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that when you're in the reality of there is no other, that you're not going to have people in your life. It does not mean that when there is no other, 
that you have to live a life of solitude and monkhood or that you cannot be a part of the world or that the mentality of the collective unconsciousness causes and requires you to hide from other people. The ego's belief is that when there is no other, then there will be nothing but my loneliness. The biggest fear of ego is fearing oneness as nothing but loneliness. But the truth is, the ego's fear of nothing but loneliness is what occurs when you are living in constant or perpetual negotiation with other. And that's where we find the despair of loneliness is when with other people or by ourselves, we are silently or verbally negotiating with others. And as we take this journey, I assure you that moving from negotiating with others does not give you the fulfillment of companionship. And the deeper truth that there is no other does not mean that you live with nothing but aloneness. So let's take the leap and let's do it together as a global community of heart-centered empaths. The most hurtful aspects of loneliness, feeling invisible, overlooked, undervalued. Maybe it's the resentment of I do so much for other people and they do so little for me. Look at how little I have in common with other people. Look at what great interest I take in their lives and look at how little they seem to care about mine. Or maybe it's I feel just so overwhelmed by the collective that my only way of finding relief is by being alone while craving the others. I wish to connect with. Or maybe it's looking it throughout your life and taking inventory and saying, I wish that others in my life were other versions, and until they are, I withdraw instead of lean in. Whatever aspect of loneliness you have processed or are currently facing, loneliness creates an overwhelming, crushing feeling of despair when you are in negotiation with other. What does that mean to be in negotiation with other? What does that mean to be in negotiation with other? Negotiation means if you do this, I'll do that. When you show up this way, I sh will show up that way. I will be more of myself when you can be this version of yourself. That's the negotiation we have verbally when interacting with other people. And a lot of our loneliness occurs when we're by ourselves, when we're processing the feelings of I don't feel lovable or I don't think that I matter because of, of the few people I have in my life. Or even if I have a lot of people in my life, maybe it's the quality of the connection that makes me feel like maybe it's my fault or there's something wrong with me. And these are all things that I'm sharing with you that I'm both channeling and reflecting from my life that I have faced and overcome in transforming negotiation with other to there is no other but the one I am that you are that we are and before we manifest or as we manifest a global community of unity consciousness what is required for any being to be surrounded by those reflecting their light back to them is to steep fully in the I am presence to become so nourished and whole by your oneness that you're neither negotiating with other, negotiating with yourself, negotiating with the universe, or in any degree of avoidance. Because it's so easy in loneliness to relate to people through codependency 
and then to seek refuge in avoidance or ghosting others or treating others the way we've been treated as a trauma response of our unhealed wounds of abandonment and rejection. And a lot of us live mentally in a negotiation. And so take inventory right now. What negotiation are you in? Is the negotiation, how do I show up in a way that makes other people into better versions? Is the negotiation, what do I have to do in order to be safer in the presence of others and less of a target? Is the negotiation what must be done to make other people the versions I would prefer them be? In the comments, can you write what negotiation with other you are in? Sometimes negotiation in order to find it because it can seem a little elusive in the beginning. Sometimes negotiation can be like, until this happens, I won't be myself fully or free or happy or fulfilled. And sometimes the negotiation with other, because other is simply a word that refers to something outside of you, something other than the breath that comes and goes in this moment. And so other might even be not just the other people in your life, family members, friends, colleagues, co-workers, lovers, co-parents. Sometimes the other that you're negotiating with is the chasing of life purpose, the manifestation of different life circumstances, different money in your bank account, a different level of social status, maybe more visibility on social media and whatever way it plays out, it's fine. But negotiation with other is what creates loneliness because any form of negotiation keeps you from being fully in this moment. And when you are fully in this moment, there is no loneliness. There is only solitude. So in the, in the comment section, what is the distraction, the preoccupation, or the negotiation that keeps you in loneliness instead of deepening the presence of solitude? Janie says, until you see me, I will withdraw. Janice says, negotiation with myself trying to stop smoking. We can resolve that, and thank you for your honesty. T. Gray, negotiations with something which wants to be perfect. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Tina says, it's me battling myself. Haven't we all faced that one? Terry, sugar, it keeps me safe. We can work on that. Pilar, arguing with my narcissist partner. I need to stop it. Can we see in all these examples? These examples are how the outside perspective or our perception of an outside environment is shaping and defining our experience. And that's okay. Robert says, overwhelming, difficult circumstances. I feel you. Compassion says, desperation to prove myself. So how do we find our way out of this? Let me help you. So the first step we've realized in today's transmission is that loneliness is a transition from negotiation with other to there is no other from separation to oneness.
So how do we resolve negotiation? Well, I'll give you an easy solution because I'll, I'll first tell you the not so easy solution that never works. So we don't have to do that because I never want you to do what doesn't work. And when we're run by our egos, we're constantly trying to do the same thing that doesn't work. So here's what doesn't work. What doesn't work is you being aware that you're negotiating and telling yourself to stop it. Because if you tell yourself to stop it, now you're just negotiating with your own patterning. Just like you're waiting for other people outside to be different before you can be different, or you're waiting for circumstances to be different before you can be different, now you're having an inner negotiation, a meta-negotiation with your own egoic patterning, saying, now I need you to stop before I can start something better. Let me just give you some wisdom. And I just want you to drink in the wisdom and feel the vibration, and the vibration will unhook it for you. It's not that you need to stop negotiating. It's that negotiation only leads to more negotiation. And even if you negotiate with the person or anything in life, and it changes, your, your patterning is going to immediately turn to something else to be negotiated. Negotiation never leads to the end of negotiation. Negotiating only creates more discussions, more conflict. And the end of negotiation isn't because you say stop it. And the, and the end of negotiation isn't you either attempting, isn't attempting for you to try to be okay with how people are. Let me also say this so boldly true. The old school method is we stop negotiating by just allow by accepting people as they are. But how people are may not be a positive influence in your life. And I'm not saying to ghost everyone either. I'm saying that's just an old step. That's how we sidestep this process instead of move directly through it. And if you have a partner whose imbalances are taking from you instead of connecting with you, accepting them as they are is going to make you a heart-centered accomplice to those who only know how to connect by taking. So that's not the way. The way is we unhook from negotiation by just becoming aware that, hey, negotiation happens. I acknowledge it's happening. And may I remind myself that negotiation only leads to more negotiation. Like someone who's trying to work on a vintage classic car in their garage. And they say, once I get it fixed, I will take it out for a drive on a Sunday afternoon. But once one thing is fixed, another thing needs fixing. And they spend their life in a garage working on a car and never taking it out for a test drive. And isn't that the way we most of the time explore our spiritual journey? We're constantly under the microscope of self-analysis and self-judgment. Treating ourselves like a spiritual object. Trying to heal from the wounds of being objectified by people who take instead of connect. Let's heal all that. Just become aware that negotiation only leads to more negotiation and will never give you anything you want whatsoever, but just an opportunity to have an endless circular conversation that goes nowhere. And just feel what happens emotionally and energetically when you take that in. The next step, there's nothing to negotiate. It's very different, and it might sound similar, but instead of trying to stop a negotiation, there's actually nothing to negotiate, and here's why. Let today be a bold awakening. You can negotiate in your mind that if I'm this way, they'll be that way, or if I do this, this will happen. And then, 
what happens when it doesn't? Do you curse the universe? Do you blame yourself for not being connected? Do you turn inward and say, I guess that wasn't my intuition and blame yourself? Or isn't there a deeper insight to be revealed? The deeper insight is negotiation only leads to more negotiation and you only are in perpetual negotiation until you wake up and realize there's nothing to negotiate. Life will be what it will be and it invites your full participation. And when you are participating with such presence, attentiveness and expression, that there is nothing to negotiate. Not only is that where loneliness dissolves, but when there's nothing to negotiate, here's the, here's the ironic and perfect magic. When there's nothing to negotiate, now there's everything to choose. Why are people so paralyzed by making choices? Why are people so afraid of making the wrong choice? Why are people using their intuition to figure out a choice and then muscle testing it endlessly to try to confirm and confirm and confirm and never get to a place of being confident about a choice and always fearing missing out or doing something wrong because they're not choosing they're negotiating so when there's nothing to negotiate now there's everything to choose and you're not choosing because of the outcome you think it's going to force to manifest you're choosing based on what option matches my highest values, what option brings the most relief in my body. Because when you make choices, as if choices are the inner compass that help you navigate your highest timelines throughout your soul's journey, the feeling in your body when you make a choice is telling you what feeling you're going to experience more of if you head in that direction. So you don't need to know what's going to happen. You just need to be aware of how you feel. And when you survey your options and there are feelings of relief, feelings of openness and feelings of tension and struggle, that's your body telling you if you move in the direction of an option that feels like struggle, only more struggle will be felt. If you move in a direction that feels like openness, you know, even if there's conflict, it will only lead to more openness. So the feeling is telling you either what you're going to feel more of or what the momentary conflict or friction will lead to. You only need to be attuned to your feelings. That's how there's everything to choose and nothing to negotiate. Feel that. Step number one of healing loneliness. Negotiation only leads to more negotiation. Until this happens, I can't be this. Or who do I need to be to get them to be different? That's negotiation. Step number one, negotiation only leads to more negotiation. Step number two, there's nothing to negotiate. And in the space where there's nothing to negotiate, now there's everything to choose. Because choices are about feeling the vibration of each option and following in the flow of how things feel, not what you believe will occur when you make those choices. We're not here to control reality. We're here to harmonize with reality. And there are a lot of people who are distracted from harmonizing with reality by trying to control reality and calling that co-creation. That's not co-creation. That's control. Harmony says life is putting me in the exact environments that are going to help me evolve from one milestone of expansion to the next. I decide the perspective that will give me the greatest experience of that expansion. And I choose the highest timeline of that expansion by becoming aware of my options, sensing how it feels in my body, and following that flow. We don't negotiate our options, we feel into our options. And you start to realize 
that as you start to transition from codependency to interdependence, from separation to unity consciousness, out of the futility of negotiation, because negotiation is only what you promise yourself is going to occur. It's a promise you make between you and your imagination. And even if other people agree and then betray that agreement, it was their, it was their imagination agreeing with yours. Because life will be what life will be. And you're here to take the thrill ride that will be more thrilling instead of fearful when you step into the courage already awake within you. You're far greater and bigger than you can ever imagine. You've just spent your entire life trying to fit in by playing really small. You came to a world and everyone was masquerading as a small self. And you thought, I can't be without that. And so you developed a small self to try to fit into a big universe disguised as a small world. But there's nothing small about you. You are the all that is, the one I am that you are. There is no other but the one I am that you are. And that does not mean that when you are with other people and they're acting shitty, that there's something shitty in you to clear. That spiritual codependency. Because equally to all of us being the one I am, each of us are on our own unique journey of individuality and exploration and expansion. So we don't define ourselves by external circumstances, nor do we use other people's journeys to define ourselves. That's codependency. That's negotiation. There is no other. There is simply the appearance of other versions of self called other people who are only reading from scripts and acting a certain way to put you in the very environments to bring up the very feelings that are here to be transformed. Or they're the characters who are reading from the scripts that are helping you to develop the choices that help you to be more courageous instead of fearful. So it's not to suggest that when you're with people that are acting inappropriately, that that means, well, they're here to bring up my feelings and triggers and I should just work on that. Maybe they're there acting the way they're acting to help you develop the courage to say that's not how I deserve to be treated you will either change your behavior or I will leave and it's not always going to be that intense of a standoff but sometimes it is and if you are afraid of other people's feelings in standing for your truth and even daring to create a boundary or walk away, you are forgetting that the divine equally lives in other people's hearts. And if you could hear the voice of the divine that speaks to you as I am, the divine would say, don't hold back your truth, for I am the divine I am dwelling in all beings, and I, the creator of all, can handle your truth because it is I who created the truth within you to give you the opportunity to practice speaking the truth that you are. So that when you are trying to protect other people from your truth, you are forgetting the divine within them. God can take your truth. And even if people seem wounded, debilitated, and discombobulated by what you need to convey, it is only setting them on a path of greater expansion, to move them out of a level of negotiation that sometimes we can only move beyond by being more present with ourselves instead of attached to others or taking from others instead of connecting in a space where there is no other. So when you are afraid to make a bold choice, you're forgetting that it is the divine within you asking you to make the choice. And it's the divine within others that will ensure everyone's healing and transformation as a result. You don't need to be everyone's rescuer because then you can't be present in your own journey. You only need to be present in your journey 
and trust that the universe dwells in all hearts and will care for the hearts of those you may not choose to be around so that they are no longer a point of negotiation. They are simply a character helping you to step deeper into your courage as a way of transmuting any pattern of fear. Feel that. Tina says, I freaking love you, Matt. I freaking love you too. Betsy, Matt, you are on fire. Thank you. I feel it. We all feel it. I am the fire that burns within you. I am the fire that melts all wounds in every heart. I am the fire that melts away distraction only to show that there is one truth in existence that no flame can touch, taint, or affect. I am the fire of never-ending expansion, the same fire you are, just fully in it, inviting you not to be burned by the fire, but to be the fire that only burns away distractions and distortions. And if you are in relationship with other people who only know how to relate by taking or perceiving through distractions and distortions, and you have arrived at a truth that is different than their truth, you cannot help the pain that arises when their expectation of how you need to be becomes different from how they expect or assume you to be. It's not your problem to fix. And as empaths, we don't know how to support without rescuing. That's something we learn as we go along. But today's journey is about healing or transforming loneliness from negotiation with other to there is no other. Because negotiation only leads to negotiation. And there's nothing actually to negotiate. People make agreements until they decide to break them. People come together until it's time to step apart. Things come until it's time to go. People are born until it's time to die. And we only die. And as many times as we need to die until we see there are only births and no such thing as death. And the only reason why any death creates a sense of loneliness or grief is because of the negotiations we are here to awaken from. So as a way of really deepening this exploration, let's do a repeat after me. And I have some fun things to share with you. And thank you all for being here. I accept that loneliness is caused by any degree of negotiation with other. It is the need, requirement, or necessity for something to be other than how it is in order for me to be fully healed, whole, and complete. And even when I allow people to be as they are, they may have been created to help me strengthen my ability to speak my truth 
establish boundaries. Be more mindful with my time. And to know when it's time to go. Temporarily or permanently. And if there is any truth I'm afraid to speak, knowing that truth is never about other people. Truth is only a confession of what is right or good for me. So when my truth involves other people or what I think about them, That's a projection of truth. Truth is not what's wrong with others. Truth is what's right for me. And when I am unable to speak and share what's right for me, I'm doubting the divine will care for them in my absence to keep me locked into being a rescuer. Which only makes loneliness more lonely. Which only makes resentment more resentful. Which only makes exhaustion more exhausting. And in knowing it is so. I allow all patterns of negotiation. All patterns of rescuing. all fears of speaking my truth and any memories of persecution, heresy, retribution, and any degree of separation, including codependency and enmeshment. and any negotiation within myself and any negotiation with the universe or belief that decisions control outcome all cleared out of my energy field once and for all return to the source of its origin Transmuted completely. I kneel to completion now. And from this moment forward, I accept that there is no other. But the one I am. even while appearing as a world of many individuals. And it doesn't mean I am all these individuals. I am the consciousness energizing individuality, not the individual coming and going. I acknowledge that other people are on their own journey. 
a journey of one being experienced by all. And I'm simply here remembering the all in one I am. As the one I am in all. While not taking responsibility for the journey other people are on. For the experiences they have in my presence. but simply accountable for the choices I make. And taking inventory for the reasons why I make the decisions I make. I embrace the one I am in all. While giving all the space to be as they are. In a new timeline where there's nothing to negotiate and everything to choose. And when there's nothing to negotiate and everything to choose, There's everything to win and nothing to lose. Thank you, loneliness, for moving me through this gateway. I'm ready to be in harmony with the universe. with nothing to control. Just feel this. Hmm. Just feel this. Before I share some exciting news, please write in the comments what you are feeling as a result of this transmission today. It's a big one. What are you feeling? Kim says, thank you, Matt. Perfect timing as always. Love you. I love you too, Kim. Tina has prayer hands. What are you feeling as a result of this? Sandy says, relief. Yes. Bridget says, I love a gateway. I felt, I felt it happen. Pilar, wow, brilliant total shift. Yes. Again, let's remember, loneliness is being alone with your negotiations. We don't do that anymore. Calmness, calm, at peace, happiest, yes. Anna says, I'm free feeling from my own shackles, thank God. Patty, content and joy, thank God. This transmission is to remind us as a global community, we are in a different path now. And I am serving you in a way that supports that different path. And that is why I am so blessed to have created with my team All for Love, All Access. Not only is it a portal where you can connect with other empaths of like mind and heart on our platform, not run by any social media site whatsoever, just our own sovereign space where you can access the history of these teachings and transmissions. It will continually give you access to all my upcoming programs with endless replays so you can take in everything at the perfect pace that's right for you. So you don't have to fear missing out or losing. We can actually dive in deeper and receive in a more meaningful way. And our first live call, because not only do you get the history of my teachings, 
not only is it a portal to connect with other empathic beings and to have the support that helps us to shift from negotiating with other to there is no other. Because just because there is no other doesn't mean you don't need support. So we as, we as a team have created for all empaths this incredible online campus and way of connecting to be with these teachings and to support each other through these teachings. Because what's important to me as a teacher, as a healer, as a way shower, is not just for us to be on our individual journeys and to focus on ourselves, but how we are learning to connect and transform ourselves as a way of creating more meaningful conscious community in our world. And not only does the All for Love, All Access, which right now through this Wednesday, we're offering founding members rate, which is as low as $25 a month, the lowest rate it will ever be. It leads us to Wednesday for our first live call, where I will be transmitting and answering questions and providing processes to help you take a shift like the one you felt today. This is a taste. What we will begin exploring on our live calls twice a month is unlike anything I have ever offered and perhaps unlike anything you've ever experienced before because we're ready. We're ready to be empowered. We're ready to ascend and we're ready to lead this world in a different direction. And I'm ready to lead. And so I invite you to join me for our first live call of All for Love Live this Wednesday. And from now through Wednesday, you can join All for Love All Access for the lowest rate it will ever be available. And join us in creating a new world, a world that works for all, a world rooted in love, inclusivity, and unity consciousness. A world overflowing with oneness. And as the top comment posted, there's a link for you to join us and to explore the program and all its offerings. And I invite you to dive in And I'll tell you why. Because the days of spiritual window shopping are done. The days of dipping our toes in a little bit and not taking this journey all the way through are obsolete. We're already this deep in the journey. The only way out is in. And I am here to lead you through the jungle of that journey. A journey where you can move beyond the need to heal and spend your journey exploring endless vibrational frequencies from one miracle and one moment of grace to another. I want to move you in a journey where there's nothing to work out, and everything to explore and celebrate. And that's what All for Love, All Access will bring to you from the first moment we begin this together. So please, follow the link that's been posted. Say yes to the path that leads you out of process, out of pain, out of patterning, and into an entirely new reality where different versions of you and others and the soul tribe that you're ready to surround yourself and fill your life with can now manifest. As always, it is a true honor to be here with you. I love you with all my heart. And as always, 
in between transmissions, I'm going through my own evolutionary expansion, so to always meet you different than the last time we came together, and I know we can feel the difference. I meet you. As the light that I am, I meet you as the love that you are. Please join us for All for Love, All Access. This Wednesday call is going to be pure fire in the most loving, beautiful way. This is just a taste. I love you all. I look forward to being with you soon. And thank you for being the missing piece that completes the puzzle of the universe. It is you who I serve. I love you. Namaste. Hand in hand, heart to heart, we're all.